Once a busy dock where sailors and merchants would trade goods and set sail for voyages of discovery, Bristol's harbourside is now an attractive modern development filled with restaurants, bars, shops and hotels. Bristol's name is derived from the Saxon Brigstow, meaning the place of the bridge, although it's unclear when the first bridge over the Avon was built. There are now some 43 bridges in the city, including this pedestrian footbridge spanning the floating harbour. A popular meeting point, Perrow's Bridge, was named in honour of Perrow Jones, who came to live in Bristol as the slave of sugar merchant John Pinney. Another pedestrian bridge, the Valentine, named on February the 14th, literally snakes across the harbour behind Temple Mead Station. The world-famous Clifton Suspension Bridge spans the Avon Gorge and the River Avon. Superb views from above the bridge can be found, particularly from the Clifton Observatory. An interesting camera obscura projects a panoramic view of the surrounding area onto a white surface inside a darkened room. The person responsible for the Clifton Bridge was, of course, Isambard Kingdom Brunel, whose legacy is rightly celebrated in Bristol. Let's hear from the great man himself about the origins of the bridge. The Clifton Suspension Bridge was my first great project here in Bristol. I had broken my leg working on the Thames Tunnel with my father in London and my doctor suggested I come to Bristol to recover. Whilst here I heard about a competition to design a bridge across the Avon Gorge. I, with nothing better to do, threw myself into the project wholeheartedly, submitting four designs. Each varied slightly, but all were suspension bridges and all were far larger and more daring than any bridge yet built. The great engineer, Mr Thomas Telford, was to be the judge of the competition. Believe it or not, he rejected all 22 designs that were submitted and then handed in one of his own. Of course, his design was rather timid in my estimation and it's absurdly expensive because he didn't think a suspension bridge would be strong enough to cross the gorge. Once I spoke to the committee, I managed to persuade them the error of their ways and they opened the competition once more. Again, I submitted four designs, but this time... Out of concession to some of their fears, I added an extra abutment or tower which can still be seen today on the Lee Wood side of the gorge. Now, believe it or not, between you and I, it's completely unnecessary. It doesn't support any weight at all, but it kept the doubters happy. <laughs> what, what else can I say? That's what was important. And of course, it was enough for me to win the competition and to, uh, to have my bridge built though it wasn't actually finished until after I died, but uh, well, the less said about that, the better, I think. Bristol has been described as the street art capital of the UK, and a walk around the city soon reveals many artworks to back up this statement. One particular artist, the elusive Banksy, has raised the cultural profile of Bristol on the world stage. During 2014, inside Bristol Museum and Art Gallery, visitors were able to see Banks's artwork, Mobile Lovers, which has since raised over £400,000 for a local boys' club. On permanent display, donated to the museum by the artist, is the Angel Bust, or Paint Pot Angel. A cross-harbour ferry leads visitors to Brunel's other great masterpiece in the city, the SS Great Britain. Perhaps you'd like to tell us about your historic ship, Mr Brunel. Isambard Kingdom Brunel at your service and behind me is the SS Great Britain, the second of my three steamships but the best well known and really the most important. The reason the Great Britain is so special is that she is the great-great-grandmother of all modern ships afloat today. 
She was the first ocean-going ship to be made of iron, the first to use a screw propeller, and she was the first luxury cruise ship. So everything from the Titanic to the Costa Concordia, although those are perhaps not the best two examples, owe their design to my ship here. Really, she can be thought of as the Concord of the 1800s, combining cutting-edge technology, tremendous speed and exclusive style in crossing the Atlantic. She really is the ship that changed the world. During August, it's not unusual to see hot air balloons flying over the city, as this is the time of the Bristol International Balloon Festival. Crowds gather at the large country estate, Ashton Gate, where mass launches are made twice a day subject to weather conditions. One very popular attraction is the night glow, when balloons are inflated to music and which also seems an excellent way to end our brief visit to this vibrant city.